as she embraced the mount of another outlaw breast to breast and with a murmured apology to the horse, flung it like a child's toy back into a knot of outlaws behind. Welcome back, folks, to another End Time Story, a short work of narrative fiction. I am here with Ed Greenwood, the original creator of The Forgotten Realms. Uh, in today's story, we're actually going to be talking about Dove Falconhand, uh, for which we already did another video, which I'm going to leave somewhere around here on the screen that you can check out. That was a lore video. This is an End Time Story. So, Ed, you want to tell them a little bit about what they have in store for them? Well, okay. This sort of End Time Story is a you are there moment for seeing what happens well one of the chosen mistra in this case dove uh, comes to the aid of a mortal who's in a sticky situation and we get to see what it's like when the servant of a goddess the goddess of magic in this case comes to your aid I have already heard this story, so I won't spoil it, but I gotta say you are really in for a treat. Uh, if you were enjoying these videos, please be sure to like, subscribe, be sure to turn on notifications so you know when the next video comes out. And also, please, please consider becoming a protector of the realms. If you go to patreon.com slash Ed Greenwood, uh, that's, you know, the support from the Patreon is actually what allows us to continue making the videos here. So thank you so much, and uh, please enjoy this story about Dove Falconhand. A Dove Glimpse, listening to Braven. The outlaws came down on the camp like a silent racing storm, wasting no wind on battle cries. More than a dozen hard-eyed, their motley armor much scorched from when it had been fire-cooked to drive off maggots from the dead it had been taken from. Tired eyes above blades held in hands capable and ready. Dove strolled out alone to face them, not bothering to go for a helm or a shield, ignoring the wails of fear from around her and the frantic fleeing. They spurred down the slope, growing smiles and sneers as they came, and then, as they got a good look at the woman, they wavered and reined in or aside, their mounts snorting and kicking in surprise at such sudden curving. Dove arched a sardonic eyebrow as she met fearful gazes. There was shocked recognition on their faces. Her hair, of course. What, Braven? An older man snarled from the now tangled rear of the outlaws. Why this cowardice? I see only one against us, and a woman alone. Or is she bait in some trap? Speak. She's her own bait, Cauldron, came the curt reply. It's she who slays. They had remembered her down the years from a fray not so far from here. The tall woman whose hair was like silver, who'd faced the hobgoblins who outnumbered her more than a score to one with no fear in her eyes and gently pleaded with them to get gone and so live all the time she slew them. Bah, the old man snarled, spurring forward, Old tales frighten you? There's but the one of her. Must I do everything myself? Younglings these days. Dove struck aside his hurled knife, almost lazily, a flick of her wrist, sending it sing-clanging well away, but then stood as still as a statue as he charged at her, rising in his stirrups to bring a great black beak of a war axe sweeping across and down. The old outlaw's horse was as much of a veteran as he was, responding to the leaning guidance of his knees, and the wise thing for the lone woman to do would have been to run and sprawl, to roll up and keep right on fleeing, not to step aside and then immediately back in again, to stand like a tall rock, to bar the mighty swing, sword against axe. The weapons clashed with a jarring shriek in a hard galloping meeting that should have sent the crazy woman tumbling at the least, not made Cauldron howl in startled pain as the axe skirled from his suddenly numbed grasp an instant before a deft hand caught his boot heel in its stirrup and heaved, and he found himself hurtling through empty air, head over dirty heels, to crash down and bounce in half-dazed astonishment, horse thundering on and his helm bouncing and rolling after it. 
He clawed for his best dagger as he panted and scrambled to his knees, whirling to try and see just how close the woman was. Her shadow had already fallen on him. Cauldron gaped up, still huffing for breath, fearing he was already a dead man. The silver-haired woman was standing over him calmly, sword unwavering, but held out to one side. She wore a gentle smile. Well met, she said in dry tones. You really should listen to Braven. Doing so just might keep you alive a trifle longer. Might. Cauldron held up his dagger and sought to crawl backwards behind its feeble point. Who are you? Dove Falconhand, I am called. And this camp is guarded. Her voice gained sudden volume to carry to all of the now milling men on horseback. So go away, all of you, empty-handed and in peace, or pay the price. I... The Red Ravens retreat from no one. Dove sighed. The pronounced local abundance of fools continues unabated, I see. Do you lead here, Cauldron? Or are things more a matter of who shouts the loudest among you ravens? I lead, the old man snarled, scrambling to his feet. And I say, attack! Dove sighed again, and then was gone. Statue become arrow in an instant, a rushing shape, silver hair swirling, to pluck her sword and swing it in a parry against one reaching outlaw blade as she embraced the mount of another out outlaw breast to breast and with a murmured apology to the Sorry. horse, flung it like a child's toy back into a knot of outlaws behind. Its falling rider clawed air with a startled yell, but Dove stood not to watch. Two swift strides, and she had Cauldron plucked up and dangling helplessly by his throat, his best dagger slapped casually away into the face of another raven. Care to change your mind? Dove inquired gently, for there's clearly something amiss with the one you have. No! The old man spat. Cauldron Dragon Slayer backs down from no one! Dove smiled, shrugged, and broke his neck with one easy motion. Braven, she called. Cauldron's met with an unfortunate accident. So, who leads the ravens now? You? A sudden silence fell as ravens reined their horses in again to gawk at the dead and dangling Cauldron, and then looked to Braven, who gave a look of challenge to outlaws on all sides, and then looked back at Dove and said, Yes. I do. And are you going to have the good sense Cauldron sadly lacked and go raid elsewhere, leaving this camp alone and returning not for reprisals? I, yes, yes, ravens to me, we ride elsewhere. Wait now. Those angry words came from a tall, thin, pockmarked outlaw in armor of red, laced with brown rust. She's but one woman. Are we really going to back down from... She who slays, Braven said grimly. Before all the gods, yes. If you think you can best her, Rogalar, you have my leave to try. After all, she's but one woman. Those last words were heavy with mockery, and Hrogalar flushed with anger and spurred his horse forward. Hrogalar! That cry from behind the rest of the outlaws lashed like a whip, and Hrogalar wavered in his saddle as if an invisible hand had clawed him down from behind. Woman! The same woman's voice came again, raw and desperate. Spare my man from his folly! Slay him not, I beg of you! Frogalar turned his horse twice around in his warring anger and anguish. Maravel, stop! I need no guardian! Dove gave him a sudden smile. Yet evidently, you do. And behold, the gods smile upon you, for she is here. If only you have the good sense to listen to her, something I sense you don't do often enough. 
Hence, Merivelle said bitterly, we are outlawed. If you would change that, Dove said calmly, come to my fire this evening and offer no violence, and we shall feast together and talk. I have need of sensible folk who know life hard and real and how to swing a sword. Into the silence that fell then, Braven asked roughly, what do you offer us? Is this a trap? You have my word that if you return to these tents at nightfall, you will find no one here who is not here now. I seldom bother with traps. Others furnish this world with far too many traps as it is. Come and eat and talk. And if my offer is not to your liking, you will at least have had a good meal and a chance to relax for an evening in these hard lands under my protection. Hrogalar snorted at that, but he snorted alone. The silence returned, and Dove stood in it waiting patiently, not prodding. It was another of the old grizzled outlaws who stirred first, looking to his closest sword brother. Well, what say you? I will heed Braven, came the reply. The outlaws all looked to the one called Braven, who drew in a deep breath like a man settling himself after great grief, stared off into the distance for a moment, then looked at Dove and said, we will come, in peace, and ready to listen. Dove smiled, and I shall greet you in peace and ready to listen. So, until nightfall. She turned and asked one word in soft challenge. Hrogalar? Hrogalar sighed. I, I am listening to Braven. The smile Dove gave him then was dazzling. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're doing this. This is Rothay. This is another one that, you know, whether the accent over the, the E has gone away or not, you pronounce it as if it were French, as if the accent was there. Rothay. Not Roth, not Roth. Please do not pronounce it Roth. There are certain people in the realms who do, and they're mainly uh, east of the vast up in the mountains. They say Roth, but that confuses everybody else because there's a an orc tribe up there called the Roth. So, you know, Rothe, please, Rothe. The big shaggy things that, you know, are sort of between buffalo and sheep, Rothe. We eat them. They stand around in the in the snow until we eat them. Rothe. 